I'll put some music on it. Thank you to Mubi for sponsoring this video. One of the things I absolutely love about the Coen brothers is their knack for creating vibrant and interesting minor characters. Where's Cincinnati? What? Cincinnati, it's not in here. It should be in there. Their main characters are wonderfully realized, but often play a sort of straight man to a world filled with wacky and unique individuals. Mm. Sorry. If you'd like to kiss him, it would be all right. Thank you, the spirit has flown. Your wire said $50. You didn't see Bernie Bam Bam before he was shown across. Uh, no. The characters that surround the main characters often found behind a desk. Can I share something with you? There is more material? I know this kind of man. You got a loose cannon here. Or a counter. If you don't want to accept that, I don't know what else I can do for you. Welcome to Los Angeles, Mr. Fink. Watch your language, young fella. I'm just one person, so it don't matter the size of the bed. These minor characters are only minor in the amount of screen time they receive. My God, my dogs are barking. We started out at this little old place right off of Wilshire. It's there, been quite a day. Thing. In a lot of films, the minor characters that surround the main characters are either non-existent or a bland afterthought. But in a Coen Brothers film, the minor characters can be just as interesting as the protagonists and villains. The Coen Brothers' ability to quickly create interesting characters with a short amount of screen time is a critical element of their latest film, The Ballad of Buster Scruggs, where the anthology format guarantees almost every character will only have a short time to be developed on screen. And yet, in the short moments many of these characters have on screen, I found myself more invested in them than I often am in the main characters that inhabit a lot of feature-length films. These types of minor characters are non-existent in their first film, Blood Simple, but we'll start to see examples pop up in their second film, Raising Arizona. Well, which is it, young feller? You want I should freeze or get down on the ground? And their use of minor characters has gradually increased throughout their filmography. The brothers want these characters to immediately stand out and make a strong first impression. And there are a lot of ways they do this. They'll use exaggerated costumes. I have my bear skin. Or mannerisms. An obvious mood. May I have your ticket, please? They'll introduce the character on screen in an unusual way. and sometimes use small details, like the dirt around a character's fingernail. Welcome to the Hotel Earl. May I help you, sir? Sometimes it's the posture of the character. What's the rumpus? Or their accent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Mostly pretty good. And he rentin' kilts. He says, oh, so I get it. So you think I'm some kind of jerk for asking, only you don't use the word jerk. Or the way the protagonist reacts the first time they see the character. Or talks about them when they're not on screen. Herb wants to see me? If you have a moment. And the Coens are not afraid to let these characters momentarily take center stage. Enter the dame. There's one in every story. Ten bucks says she's looking for a hand up. Well, that about does her. Wraps her all up. There are two ways the brothers use casting to help minor characters stand out. The first is by using relatively unknown actors that have an interesting look. And these people catch our attention at first glance. The Coen brothers have been known to put out casting calls for regular looking people. And they're often looking for the types that are the opposite of extras that just blend into the background. Long-term parking charges by the day. The second way they use casting, one they've employed more often in recent movies like Hail Caesar, is using a relatively well-known actor for a fairly minor role. A great example of this is Jonah Hill's character in Hail Caesar, who appears on screen for all of a minute and 40 seconds. It's part of the job, miss. But examples of this go as far back as Raising Arizona, where they used Emmett Walsh for only two scenes. Hey, me and Bill's patrolling down Nine Mile. Bill Roberts? No, not that mother scratcher, Bill Parker. Perhaps most importantly, 
These minor characters stand out because they aren't just filler. The rabbi is busy. They often have something the protagonist wants. I don't see a lot of money here. Or are thwarting the protagonist's goals. I will pay $225 and keep the gray horse. I don't want the police. I cannot accept that. There will be no settlement after I leave this office. It will go to law. They create obstacles for the protagonist. Now we got a nice, quiet little beach community here, and I aim to keep it nice and quiet. Or are an obstacle. <laughs> Their presence has a real effect on the protagonist. The gun is working in shifts. <laughs> which makes them an important and memorable part of the world. What are you, nuts? There's a certain amount of subtlety and slower pacing that's usually effective for developing a main character. However, when trying to quickly create a memorable minor character, there's often not enough time to be subtle about things. The Coen brothers are a lot of things, but subtle is not one of the words I would use to describe most of their filmmaking. The over-the-top and exaggerated style they've perfected for their comedy films makes them well-suited to create these characters quickly. Hiya, buddy! My name's Buzz. I got the fuzz, I make the elevator do what she does. But they've also learned to apply some of those techniques more subtly in their dramatic films. Three years ago, I said them very words. No and good. Having these vibrant minor characters in a film makes the world of the film feel larger and more expansive. Finally, got, I got the, uh, the venue I wanted. To, I'm performing my dance quintet, you know, my cycle. It makes the audience feel like the place the protagonist inhabits is living and breathing and larger than just the main character. The Coen brothers obviously care about these characters and put just as much effort into writing, directing, and casting them as they do their main characters, and I think it pays off. Of course, a lot of credit goes to the individual actors that play these wonderful supporting roles so well, but the Coen brothers' attention to detail and willingness to be a little over the top is what has led them to create some of the most memorable minor characters we've ever seen in film. I shouldn't wear scarves. Thank you to Mubi for sponsoring this video. Mubi is a cinema streaming and download service with a heavy emphasis on curation. It's available globally. There are no ads ever. They have 30 movies available in their library that you can stream or download. And every day one gets added and one gets taken away. It's a great way to find new interesting stuff to watch and explore new corners of cinema. If you know someone who's a cinephile or a film lover, Mubi makes a great gift. And when you give a year, you get a month free for yourself. But even if you're not giving it as a gift, get your 30-day free trial today at mubi.com slash thomasflight. That's M-U-B-I dot com slash thomasflight. Thank you so much for watching. Huge thank you, especially to my patrons. Go to patreon.com slash thomasflight to learn about how you can support the content I make on this channel and get a few cool bonus things along the way. Thanks as always for watching. I hope you have a great holiday and I will talk to you again next time.